So um, these updates are quick updates. We'll go through them very quickly. We do uh, have the Go Soapbox still open. So if you have questions, go ahead and place them in app.gosoapbox.com. The, if you're not logged in already, it's KDE data is the access code. Uh, the team here will be, you know, watching these. If we have, you know, we'll be responding, and we will stick around and do those responses uh, live. We can, but if you just want a quick response, we'll be putting responses in as, um, as into the Q and A area, the social Q and A. All right. So first thing, uh, I'll jump all the way ahead. Okay. Yeah. So we got a lot of update topics. If you want a quick summary, um, this is what we're going to cover today. Um, these are all items that um, we feel like are important, but there really wasn't enough for a full-fledged session. So um, one of the first things we want to talk about is active year change. Uh, you can change to the, the active year whenever you're ready. Uh, the only thing we caution you on is to confirm that the Frisky records have all been entered before you change your active year. You know, adding and editing the Frisky records is restricted to the active year, so um, that's why it's always important to work closely with your Fis Frisky coordinator to make sure that works complete before you change your active year. What active year does is it really um, determine which is enrollment is highlighted on the enrollment screen. So when you get to the current year, it's much easier for all those that are using districts don't have to change the year so often. Uh, it doesn't control what's visible in the portal. Uh, there is an end of year checklist that provides more information uh, on this. So you might want to, if you don't already have that checked out, uh, uh, take a look at that. It has been updated this year. Uh, also, oh, KDE did our scope year change with the last release on uh, July 12th. That is more impactful to KDE than for you guys. But just so you know, uh, that scope year change does impact what data does sync to state edition. So uh, here, go, this gives you a little bit more detail of that, those changes and what we'll sync. Um, the 2023-2024 state report, reporting submissions, uh, report submissions has been updated. Share this locally. Uh, it's important to know what the reporting deadlines are. In Kentucky, I don't think we re always realize how good we've got it because honestly, we just pull the data at KDE on your behalf. Um, most, when you talk to other states, Every district's, you know, are providing flat files or some type of data exchange nightly to the date to the state agency that so they get that data. We don't have to do all that, but when we pull the data, we're relying on the data to be quality. So it's really important to get ahead of that. Um, you know, be proactive. Look for those uh, reporting deadlines. Make sure somebody is reviewing the data prior to the reporting deadline, so your data is going to be correct. Um, we are very dependent on you all. Uh, we do a lot of federal state reporting. Uh, we'll mention CRDCs coming up again, but if the data is not right and district edition, it's not going to be right when we pull it uh, to meet these reporting requirements. So the beginning of your checklist, I mentioned that previously, it has been updated for 2023-24. Um, it is the, um, you know, do pull that off, kind of Go through that with the applicable people. Hopefully, it's not all on one person in your district, but I know some of you do a, have a lot of hats you wear, so uh, that can help you make sure you've done everything you need to do. Uh, we're always welcome feedback on that, too, where it's always a continuous improvement. So if there's something that you'd like to see more detail on, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, do do want to make a quick reminder here that it's good to go ahead if you, the first day of school has changed since the students were initially rolled over, uh, roll, run the enrollment cleanup wizard just to update the enrollment start date. So that's going to be correct for you. Career readiness is a new, career readiness isn't new, but for 2022-2023 accountability, there are some new components of it. Um, students only need to meet one indicator to be post-secondary ready, either academic or career. It's still important to have that information uh, the career readiness indicators are legislatively mandated. Uh, if you want lots of details on that, you can refer back to Senate Bill 59 from, um, I guess, maybe 2022 and 25 from 23. Um, the work-based com learning component is what, you know, what's new. Um, there are some changes to the accountability regulation. Um, so you can complete, a student can complete KDE approved cooperative or internships that is aligned with a, a credential or associate degree and has 300 hours and that does on the job work experience. And that can be 
during the school year or outside the school year. So there is some additional requirements for entering work-based learning um, information into a new career readiness tab. So the work-based learning manual has been sent out. So please make sure you're taking a look at that and those individuals that should be getting credit for that career readiness measure are uh, coded accordingly. So uh, the data entry on that is specifically outlined in the um, data standard. So do make sure the appropriate people have tool rights. Uh, they can't enter the data. They don't even know that the career readiness tab is out there if they don't have tool rights to it. So do look to find out who in the district should have those act, who should have access to that uh, tab and make sure that they um, have gotten this information. I know a lot of information has gone out, so hopefully the information is out there. Uh, civil rights data collection, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, it is, gonna, we're still saying we're going to have a collection. This is not for 22-23. This is actually for 21-22 data. So uh, we're expecting it to open up this winter. We've been saying that, you know, for probably the last six months or so, we're expecting it to open up, but it did have to go some, through some additional OMB approval process this year with some changes. So KDE has every intention to help districts the way we have in the past. That should not be any cha change, but do make sure that you're taking a look at that information. You've got a point of contact assigned and somebody that is uh, ready to move that work forward uh, when we get more information on dates. We do have some uh, extended uh, school services intervention data. Just reminders here at the beginning of the year, you just need to enter the start date, the intervention type, the intervention con content area. There's no expectation that everything be entered on this tab at the same time. At the end of the year is when you're going to add the end date, the student, the results, and the total hours served. So do make sure that you get the basic information and at the end, beginning of the year and work with the appropriate people in your um, districts to do that. And make sure again that they have access to that. E-transcripts reminders. Um, this is um, the second year that we've actually been able to push the dates back. So students that graduated in May can get free transcripts through the August 30th. So please make sure that folks know that. Um, transcripts are over four dollars a piece after that point. So for what when they're after that they're considered alumni and they're over four dollars a piece. We also want to make sure that students are getting their final transcripts. Um, by uh, to the colleges so they can enroll and don't have any delays in their enrollment or scheduling courses. Um, there are some requirements at the beginning of the year. The batch functionality requires PESC, PESC mapping. Uh, so for diploma type and difficulty level that needs to be done in the new year. Um, the, the code defining must be done every year. There's details on how to do this on the e-transcripts uh, web page. Um, the Transcripts must have a graduation date and a graduation code to be considered final for the admissions. Um, counselors should generate e transcripts for all graduating seniors each year to maximize the benefit uh, and reduce the need to release again for alumni. e transcripts is a state standard and expected uh, by all Kentucky universities. So uh, we do strongly encourage um, that all districts all high schools are using the electronic transcripts. It really saves a lot of time for your students. It makes it more efficient and the universities uh, do uh, appreciate those transcripts get processed much faster, much more efficiently than um, transcripts that are paper. So this is the e-transcript res resource page. Uh, if you go into Katie's website and search for e-transcripts, uh, you're going to find this page. There's a hyperlink here also. So this information gets updated periodically. There's some previous trainings. If you've got new counselors or new folks that are doing this uh, transcripts this year, please point them to these resources. That should be very helpful. Uh, Infinite Campus invoices did go out. Um, they are they go out early in the April May timeframe. They are not due until August 15th. The reason they go out so early is to allow districts to determine if they want to pay for their uh, balance for old year or new year money. Um, the August 15th date is the date you should remember. If they haven't already been paid, the invoices are due by August 15th. If you're not sure or you can't find anybody that knows where the invoice is, you can email the KDE data request at education.ky.gov email and request a copy and we can get you a copy of that. The Kex lead data, lead changed last year and, is, uh, and it's, you know, we're seeing new changes for 23-24. Um, there are some courses uh, with out-of-field errors 
So now is a good time to start. If you've got your teachers all loaded into the system and the courses are all loaded and you're feeling good about all this, it's a really good time to go ahead and start looking at your out of field errors, check to make sure any new teachers or those teaching new courses are, are not getting some out of field errors. Um, provisional and emergency certifications expire annually on June 30th, so those have to be redone. Uh, um, so do take a look at uh, your lead data. It's a nice, uh, much nicer than it used to be. It's a nice dashboard type approach in the KEX system. So you will have some uh, case manager out of field errors. Um, students don't have case managers assigned. So do work that out so that the lead process when it goes into the fall goes much smoother for you. And it, it just helps you identify any issues earlier in the year so that you can resolve those or uh, look at any schedule changes that might need to be made. Let's see. Okay, people role manager. If you go out right now, if you're on, you know, if you have a browser open, open up uh, openhouse.education.ky.gov um, and choose your district um, and just start with the district data. There's school data available too, but just start with the district level. Those are the roles that we have for your district. So if we need to contact somebody, if we have cases point of contact or anything like that, those are the people that we actually get on our distribution list so that we can send that information out. If those roles have changed, if um, the people that have, were doing it last year are no longer doing it, or if somebody's accepted a new role and they're doing additional work, make sure that gets updated. These are the contacts that we use um, to make those contacts with districts. Uh, it's easy to check those. Work with your schools and have them look at their own um, pages that actually show who their contacts are. We use the superintendent and principal information to upload the school report card, and those are the contacts. Those should be current contacts, not prior year contacts. So do make sure that information is correct. If it's not correct, reach out to your WAPOC, uh, your uh, web application um, administrator point of contact is the WAPOC. If you go to your district page at the very bottom, you're going to see who your WAPOCs are. If the WAPOCs have changed and it's not even correct. We can You can always reach out to the KETS uh, service desk and they can help you with updates or instructions on actually how to use that system. The KEYS eligibility report, please uh, use the KEYS eligibility report at the beginning of the school year. This is will help you identify schedule issues. What you want to do is make sure that you don't have students that think they're eligible for KEYS that aren't because of a scheduling issue. Um, a minimum of five credits is required for the year. Experience-based work courses and state course code of 901005 are capped at one credit for keys. Doesn't mean they can only take one credit, but they, they should understand that if they take more than that and they don't have five credits total that count, they would, they would lose their keys eligibility for the year. So please take a look at that. There's a quick reference card link that gives you some helpful hints on what to do with that. Uh, report and how to use it, but do make sure um, the schedules aren't impacting a student's keys eligibility. School report card, we've got some tentative dates. We have opened the school report card for the safety data collection and uh, or the data review and validation and to start entering the collection data that opened on July 17th. School safety data should be reviewed by the end of the month. Uh, that's got an earlier timeline on that because it's expected that we provide the data to the Office of Education Accountability and the Center for School Safety by the end of August. So we have to turn that around pretty quickly. So do make sure the people that are um, looking at safety data and safety data, if it needs to be changed in campus, that you're reaching out to Wendy Newton so she knows to refresh the data in the school report card. Um, the collection tool is gonna stay open beyond the safety window though. It'll stay open through September 29th. That allows you to enter the safety cautionary measures, the school profile data, the parental involvement, all that information that has to be entered in the, uh, the collector. The, uh, it'll stay open. The non-accountability data will start being available August 3rd. There's majority of that, like in the overview tab, will be available for review at that point in time. There are some educational opportunity things like CTE and some of the, you know, some of the equity data under faculty that uh, won't be available in August, but it should be available in early September for review, and we'll be communicating what is available and what is not. The assessment and accountability data, we expect to be reviewed through the uh, SDRR system uh, in October, uh, and by late fall, maybe the last week in October possibly, we're looking at the public release of the school report card. 
Of course, financial data always uh, lags. Financial transparency won't be available until the spring of 2024. So that data will come out. So just make sure, it's just another plug for the people role manager, make sure to work with your WAPOC to make sure the superintendents and principals are correct. If they're not correct, that does require a call to Jesse Carlton or an email to Jesse Carlton once you've got it updated in the people role manager system to tell her that needs to be changed because she has to do that a little bit manually to be able to get those updated after the initial load to uh, school report card. There is a school report card resources page that provides you the communications, lots of resource doc documentation, and um, there even a list of what you know needs to be done, a checklist per se on the site that can help you as you navigate through the school report card days. The uh, QA worksheet, it does, this is one that you all may want to take a look at even if you don't have anything to do with school report card. Make sure if you look at that QA worksheet um, resource on the school report card page that the people that need access to those um, documents, I mean not documents, but those reports in Infant Campus that can help them with validating data have that ac access they need to be able to access it. Otherwise, they're going to go into Infinite Campus. They're going to try to find the resource that we mentioned and they can't find it. Um, so if you know who's doing that, just make sure that they have the resources uh, and have user rights to the uh, appropriate reports. It is recommended that school report card to be a, uh, a uh, team effort because it does take a lot of different expertise for the different areas of, of data reporting. So if you've not got that type of situation, there's still time to kind of work together and form a team on school report card and, and be ready for the data review that's really already started for safety, but will ramp up in August and September even further. So teacher turnover is one of the things that we do report in the school report card. Uh, that information requires us to refresh a table in Infinite Campus that has just been recently done. So it, you can run the teacher turnover report now. It shows um, students, I mean, teachers that were uh, ended the prior year and started the current year, but did not finish the year. Either they didn't finish or they started and worked at least 100 days, but didn't finish the year. And even if they're moved to administrative uh, job in the same school or district, they're still going to look as turnover because they're no longer with the students. So that report is looked at. Our turnover rate uh, last year overall was in the 20 percentile. I know they're using that report uh, at the federal legislature, uh, at the state legislators has was a report on that. So please make sure that information is correct. Uh, and if you have questions about it, uh, reach out to uh, Todd Davis uh, with uh, the Office of Educator Licensure who uh, manages that area. Uh, beginning of year uh, user access. This is a really good time for you all to think about, okay, who do we, who's new that we need to make sure has the access they need? Who's gone that should know, that should have their access revoked? And who's changed positions within the district that needs to meet, we need to relook at what level of access they need. Do they need the same level of access they had last year or they need to change that? Remember, you know, nobody should, you know, there's very few people that have access to everything in Infinite Campus. It's a need to know, you know, you need to, make sure the people that have, need to have access have the access they need, but if they don't need that access, then they shouldn't even have access to that component. Infinite Campus provides us a very, uh, you know, good tools with the ability to manage that, but it's you know, imperative that we are the ones managing it. We're making sure that it's correct each year. So this is just a good reminder to make sure that happens. Uh, there are some reports that you can use to uh, identify any stale or inactive accounts. Uh, if somebody's not using Infinite Campus, uh, and they've not used it, or if they're gone and they're still on your report, go ahead and um, end their access to that report, to that system, because if they don't need access, it's just a risk. You don't, no need to have them out there. So, uh, Ela, th that's the end of my updates. I'm going to look and see if we have anything that's uh, come in that requires a quick response. If not, we'll cover the Ela reminders. Um, the next step that we have is um, see. is ELA. We're going to remind you, same thing we said this morning, if you did not already register, register now. Um, that will get you the survey that is sent out. This, you have to respond to the survey to be able to get the ELA credit. Uh, once you re respond to that, we will send out those within two weeks. So don't, you know, don't get in a rush form, but we will get them out within two weeks. Usually they get them out even before that. But if you haven't gotten something in a couple of weeks, please reach out to us 
um, but you're not going to get it unless you've registered and you've responded to the survey. So that we always get those questions, and that's those are the two parameters that must be met before ELA credit go out goes out. Would any of the rest of the team like to uh, add anything here at the end um, before we close out? I'll give it a couple minutes to see if we get any more questions. We have not. I think probably everybody's had enough. Um, I want to thank all of the KD folks, um, the team that worked on this to put these trainings together, the presenters today. Um, we couldn't do this without them, but we also couldn't do it without you and your willingness to uh, attend an online training and take advantage of the recordings and the training that's available to you. Um, we appreciate that. Uh, we got good feedback. We had over 400 people register today uh, for this training. I don't know how many actually participated, but uh, we have different numbers throughout the day because people come and go based on the sessions. But appreciate everybody that participated and those that helped put this training on today. It's a great um, opportunity to uh, get some important content in front of everybody.